Hello and welcome to Friday's video. It's good to uh, be able to communicate with you and we want to say a huge thank you to Tony for doing the, the quiz last night. Great fun uh, and really good to see lots of familiar faces. Uh, besides having a quiz which was great, uh, we were able to have a quick chat uh, and just uh, speak to one another as well. So thank you Tony, much appreciated and thank you for everybody who turned out to have some fun. I think Tina's uh, perhaps hanging her head in a bit of shame because she only answered a few questions and uh, she gave up and went to have a bath instead. Uh, if you heard a strange trumpet sound at about eight o'clock last night, it, don't worry, you haven't missed the rapture. It was just Tina during the applause of the NHS when she took the opportunity rather than to clap to play the Vuvuzela from our loft window. Uh, so you might well have heard that around most of North Leeds. So again, thank you uh, for everybody who came to the quiz. That was great fun. And uh, we do have some more rainbow pictures. So here's our first one. This one's from Lynn. Thank you very much. Not so much a picture, but if you look closely, you'll be able to see that this is a crochet uh, and uh, has been crocheted. It's uh, a wonderful thing that's in Lynn's window. So thank you for that. Much appreciated. And then we have a slightly more tongue-in-cheek rainbow, uh, which basically uh, the message on this one was, uh, God was seen walking around Yorkshire this morning. When stopped by the police, he was asked what he was doing. Uh, and the, he, I'm working from home, he replied, which I'm sure that uh, many people can relate to that, uh, whether you're from Yorkshire or not. So thank you for that. Uh, as I've mentioned already, Tina's not here this evening, uh, and uh, but we do have some special guests. So let's introduce you to our special guests. Welcome to the Forsyth family. So let's see if we can get them to speak to us. Hello, everyone. I wanted to show you something. Welcome to our front door. Um, uh, yeah, um, today we were thinking about the verse now to show to you guys, and uh, it's from when we lived in Mexico, and it's a uh, verse Susie had to learn from memory when she was in kindergarten, and they did one of them like every week or like that, and yeah, we decided to stick it to our front door because we think it just makes a lot of sense, and yeah. So the reason that we uh, focused on that verse today was because we started our day today with a bit of tidying up, like I'm sure lots of you were doing every day. Um, and we went on to have a bit of a conversation about how important it is, especially now where, while we're all in the house together, um, that whatever we do, that we do it really well and we do it to the best of our ability. And we had a bit of a chat together as a family about how that can be hard. It, it's not always easy to... Um, do a job and do it really well especially if we want to hurry on to the next thing but we were speaking about how important that that is and how that's what God wants from us so as we all um, are getting used to new things in our house maybe working in our house maybe doing our schoolwork in our house maybe helping out more with jobs at home or whatever it might be that God says to us whatever you do do it for me do it like you're doing it for me, not like you're doing it for your mum or your dad or your family. Um, but whatever you do, do it for me and do it to the best of your ability. So we just wanted to encourage you with that. And uh, it is a strange place to be at our front door, but we have that verse on our door so that we're remembering that as we're going out each day. Also, at since if you want to remember that, I made some actions and I wonder if you could make your own. So whatever you do, do it for God. So shall we do it together? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever you, you do, do, do it, it for God. God. Lots of love to you all. Bye. Thank you for that, guys. That's uh, tremendous. And uh, what a really important verse that is. Whatever you do do it for God. Colossians 3 verse 23 
and part of the point of that is it's good to memorize scripture. Many people find that really hard but perhaps now is a good season to get into the habit of remembering verses, memorizing verses, speaking them out. They have uh, amazing power and significance in our lives. They allow God's spirit to breathe life into us as we stand on his promises, as we uh, ask him to help us have that right heart and right motivation in the things that we do, uh, particularly as we are cooped up together in many ways. For those who are isolated uh, or isolating uh, and they're not able to, to get out, certainly not as much as they would like to be able to do and interact, then uh, spending time in God's word and allowing him to draw near through that uh, is a crucial thing that we can do. So if you have any memory verses that you're particularly keen on at the moment, if you want to uh, email those in, then that would be great. If you want to share them, you could even do a video of uh, your current memory verse uh, that you might want to, to share with others and encourage them with God's word. So, thinking about God's word, we're going to have a look at Mark chapter 12. And uh, I'm going to read from verse 28 through to verse 34. And as you can see from the screen there, uh, we're going to be looking at the greatest commandment. And that's how this passage is headed up. So Mark chapter 12 and verse 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating noticing that jesus had given them a good answer he asked him of all the commandments which is the most important the most important one answered jesus is this hear o israel the lord our god the lord is one love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there is no one other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbour as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. It's interesting, isn't it, that when this man effectively repeated what Jesus had said but obviously from himself rather than just repeating Jesus words Jesus response was not only had he answered wisely but he was very close in encountering the kingdom of God and that loving God with all our heart soul mind and strength connects us with the kingdom and with kingdom life so where are we now in the time frame that we're following Jesus is in the middle of his last week. Next week we're going to be spending uh, really quite a bit more time each day uh, looking at those last few hours. But where we are today is really in the middle of this last week. We've had the triumphal entry uh, and uh, where uh, there was uh, the cleansing of the temple and uh, the fig tree. They, they're on different days first few days of the week so we're now in the middle of the week and Mark says only a small amount in this section compared to Matthew and Luke uh, if you want more uh, detail as to what Jesus was doing and talking about particularly uh, he did a great deal of teaching in these last few days and so subjects like the second coming and what that looks like and when it's going to happen he, he talked a lot about that but you can look in at those things in uh, in Matthew and Luke. So Jesus is about to leave his disciples to go to the cross. So pretty much all of what he wanted to say was of great significance. It's the sort of what you might call the garden gate syndrome. 
you can spend hours talking about stuff, but when it's about time to go, you then get down to the serious things. So not very surprising then, that right in the middle of the important things Jesus is saying to his disciples is the passage on the greatest commandment, which of course is our verse for the year. Over the last few days, we've been looking at how Jesus challenged the authenticity and fruitfulness of worship, service and calling or purpose. And in these Uh, hugely significant verses Jesus sums up what authentic worship service and calling look like he says love the Lord your God with all your heart soul mind or will and strength in other words with everything a bit like that verse we've just been looking at uh, with uh, with the children with everything everything you do do it for God. So in everything we do, we need to do it for God. But it's not a functional doing, it's a heartbeat doing. Doing it with that fullness of heart. With a clear purpose. Doing it with all our strength and our energy. Doing it mindful, purposefully. As Jesus is really only a matter of hours from his betrayal and the cross. The words he is speaking and the actions he is taking are in complete harmony. In going to the cross, Jesus is both loving the Father and loving people. By faith in the one who sent him, that he would bring him through what he is about to experience as he goes to the cross, Jesus is expressing his complete love and trust of the Father. And in doing that, he is also releasing grace and mercy to all people. Have you ever wondered how people can be so sacrificial? It is by loving God with all their heart, soul, mind, will, strength and loving others as themselves or perhaps even loving others more than themselves although we don't need to do that as much as that we love other people is the measure with which we express love for ourselves as well as we learn to love God with heart, soul, mind and strength we too release grace and mercy on those around us. So this passage is central in these last few days of Jesus. The the truth that's in this passage is central in Jesus' life. And what Jesus is about to do is in complete agreement with these words. So Jesus isn't just talking He is also acting as he goes to the cross. He is expressing his love for the Father and his love for people. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus had such a complete and perfect love. A love for you, a love that saw him uh, go to the cross to complete the purpose for which you sent him to complete his calling and ministry. Father, thank you that it was as much of an expression of love for us too as it was for the Father. Thank you that Jesus loves us so much that he went to the cross for me. Father, help us to reflect on that. Help us to be touched by that truth. Instill within us by your Holy Spirit the awesomeness of what Jesus has done and then give us the strength to follow his example, to follow the model that he established for us, 
that we too can love the Father with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and that in loving our neighbours as ourselves we will release grace and mercy and as our neighbours experience that grace and mercy they too will come near to the kingdom of heaven. Amen.